Hello, and welcome to this Bitwise webinar, Bring Mainframe Data to Hadoop with the PSIDIC to ASCII Conversion. My name is Nathan Nichols, and joining me today is Shahab Kamal, EVP of Customer Success and Solution Engineering here at Bitwise. Before I pass things over to Shahab, who will be talking about a utility to convert Ipsitic to ASCII, let me first provide a quick introduction to our organization. Bitwise, a data management company, uses over 20 years of enterprise data management experience to help bridge gaps between traditional EDW and cutting edge technologies, including big data tools. We help organizations meet their enterprise reporting, analytics, and visualization requirements by providing complete end-to-end -end services for EDW and BI, big data and cloud, digital applications, and QA testing. What truly sets Bitwise apart is not just our 20 years of experience helping leading Fortune 1000 companies solve their most pressing data challenges, but our technology leadership in developing unique tools and methodologies that accelerate complex processes. Just a quick reminder, we will open things up for an interactive Q&A at the end of this session. Feel free to send your questions via the question feature during the webinar. We will do our best to answer all questions, but as always, you can contact us at any time at sales at bitwiseglobal.com. And with that, I'd like to pass things over to Shahab. Shahab? Thanks, Nathan, and uh, welcome to everyone. So as Nathan said, uh, we are establishing data lakes on Hadoop and all associated technologies. Um, the volume of data, the center of gravity of data is moving towards these databases. Now, traditionally, uh, over the course of last at least couple of or three decades, even though there's been enhancement in the uh, new database technologies with the teasers and teradata is coming in, but most of the processing of this data has stayed on the mainframe. Uh, mainframe has been the mainstay of the back end of most uh, applications, enterprise applications at very large organizations. There's a lot of data that is sitting uh, on these mainframes, on IBM mainframes, and sadly enough, it's all in FCDIC format. There's uh, we, are, we are aware of how IBM chose to uh, code its data back in the day. And now with uh, the whole data lake concept taking a hold over the course of last uh, couple of three years, uh, this data needs to be moved into the Hadoop data lake. It could be on the cloud on Azure, GCP, AWS, or on an on-prem cluster, but it has to be in ASCII format. Uh, the need to look at this data, which was, uh, we were happy with having it on the mainframe in the past, into this data lake has increased. The problem is, you can easily convert these acidic files into ASCII. It's really a format conversion. And we can have a Java programmer come in and write some code, which can read the FCDIC format and give you the ASCII format through a translator for the same data. But the problem is not that simple. Data in on the mainframes was mostly generated by programs written in COBOL 20 or 30 years ago. Back in the day, memory was not cheap. Every attempt was made to save even a single byte of data. Because of that, COBOL copybooks had these convoluted structures to save a few bytes of memory when the data was written. So there was this redefines, there was these all kinds of things that were done on the COBOL copybook. There was compression of data, of numeric data, with these COMP1, COMP2, and COMP3 fields to save a few bytes of data. Because again, back in the day, memory was not as cheap as it is today, which makes the organization, the structure of this data sitting on the mainframe extremely complex. So it's not as easy as reading that data from the mainframe in an FCDIC file format 
and simply doing a translation of that code, uh, of that coding, of that codec into uh, uh, into ASCII. These files which are created, they are fixed length files, they are variable length files because of the way COBOL stored this data, because of the redefines in the COBOL, COBOL copy books. There's got to be a way to flatten this out into a table structure or the kind of structures which are more readable and more accessible in the Hadoop data lake into any kind of a uh, you know data, uh, data hub that we are currently building are uh, not in, just in the Hadoop even on the uh, Teradata or NetEase or Oracle or any of these other database formats as long as the data comes from uh, the mainframe file system and goes into any of these uh, into these databases it has to be uh, flattened out. It, it has to be restructured. And uh, so many other things have to be done to the data to make it fit into the table structures in Hive or on any, any of the other appliances. So it's not exact, exactly a straightforward uh, conversion. Uh, there's a lot of compl uh, complications that are involved. And because of that, uh, you know, the Conversion cannot be some kind of a easy process that we can write in-house. Uh, there's got to be a specialized, elaborate process uh, that we can either purchase or uh, we can um, build on our own. Now, ATL tools out there today, uh, if you look at Ibanisho or some of the other ATL tools, you know, with Talent, Teradata, Talent, Informatica, uh, they will offer this absolute to ASCII conversion feature as a component that you can purchase. But then if there is a business case where you're going from a mainframe to a data hub and you don't want to use that ETL tool in that data hub environment because uh, again the business case is to go to a data hub environment which could be on Hadoop which has its own ecosystem of ETL products those ETL products have not exactly evolved a whole lot to be ex uh, to make the mainframe data very accessible. And the FCRIC to ASCII conversion to some extent is solved, but you know there's, there's a lot of work still needs to be done. So the problem is you either use this expensive ETL tool in the main in the data hub environment just for the purpose of converting the data at the ingestion phase and then for the rest of the tools, the rest of the processing can be done with some of the other ecosystem tools in the open source main, uh, data hub environment or there's got to be a simple solution which does not constrict you to actually purchase the entire ETL product. All it focuses is on doing this data conversion from FCDIC to ASCII and that's where uh, we heard our customers uh, in the field uh, you know, talk about this problem to us, and that's listening to them. We thought that it would be a great idea to offer a standalone tool that can convert any ETL, uh, any uh, EPSIDIC file into ASCII, decompressing, flattening out the COBOL copybook structures or any other mainframe structures, decompressing the COM fields, and giving you flat, straight ASC, uh, ASCII data in Avro, Parquet, or any of the other formats to be ingested into your data hub. So most of us must be aware that we have, uh, uh, if you've seen our previous webinars, uh, we have a ETL uh, product of our own called Hydrograph, which has been uh, open sourced. So that again has an end-to-end -end ETL appeal. Uh, we have leveraged the backend features that work on uh, the uh, Hadoop data, uh, data Hub, and it uses Spark as its processing engine, and we've leveraged that backend, and we have built some features within that, which can read your acidic data from mainframes, do the kind of processing we just talked about, to decompress and to uh, flatten out the COBOL copy books, and give you data that will be usable in your data hub environment. 
because of that architecture that was leveraged, you know, it uses the parallel processing and all the other good things that come with Spark and the whole uh, Hadoop ecosystem. So we were able to leverage an existing ETL product which has been open sourced by us as the backbone and build this absolute to ASCII conversion and we are offering it as a standalone feature. So you don't really have to adopt the entire hydrograph ecosystem. We will be able to just give you an executable which will use the front end of hydrograph and we will see that down the road uh, in a demo uh, very shortly of how the front end of hydrograph can be utilized in a standalone mode just to use the absolute to ASCII conversion. So the process is pretty simple. You know, you have all this uh, data sitting on your mainframe systems. So Hydrograph has its own uh, data acquisition uh, layer, which connects to various mainframe uh, file systems. So you can read data from any mainframe file system. And that's your acquisition phase. There is a component that's been built on Hydrograph that actually executes on Spark that is doing the conversion for you, which is, you know, decompressing your COM fields, which is uh, flattening out the data structures in your redefined senior COBOL copybooks. And then finally, there is a data loading uh, phase, which again leverages the structures, the components that we have, that are found in Hydrograph to load this into Hive, Impala, into flat HDFS, into any RDBMS, into Redshift on Amazon, NoSQL. There are a variety of target components available. So using this as a middle layer, you can actually uh, read data from the mainframe, do the conversion on your server, and pump it out to any database that you choose to. It is not necessary that it has to end up on an HDFS Hadoop cluster. It can go to any RDBMS, any database of your choice. Also, and we will see this very shortly in a demo, is you don't really have to have a whole Hadoop cluster or a Hadoop ecosystem to uh, run this product. We have packaged this along with a single node cluster of Hadoop so once you install that on, on your server, it will automatically create its uh, single node cluster system as the backend with installation of Spark. So you don't really have to have a Hadoop data lake to use this facility to do the conversion. It can read a mainframe data, connect to the mainframe systems, execute on your single standalone server, and load data to any target a database system, which could be your Hadoop ecosystem, or it can be any RDBMS. So uh, just wanted to clarify that this is not a solution only for someone who wants to take mainframe data into your Hadoop data hub. Sure, it does use Hadoop uh, technologies through the conversion, but you don't have to have a data hub. It, is, it comes as a standalone installable, which will create a Spark environment behind the scenes on the server we choose to install it, and then that's all you need. It will connect to the mainframe and load data into the, any, any of the target environments. So with that, um, let's uh, quickly run through a quick demo. So this, uh, if you are familiar with, is the front end for Hydrograph, which has been leveraged for this facility. So when you actually install the data conversion uh, utility, which uh, I will call it utility because it has been, you know, uh, carved out of Hydrograph. It comes with this front end. It comes with this uh, UI where you can go in and create your data conversion flow. But you don't really, you don't really, uh, you're not really required to get the entire Hydrograph ecosystem in place. It is just a piece that has been carved out of Hydrograph to give you the ease of use of this facility. Also, it leverages all the input file format features inside of Hydrograph, so you can pretty much con connect to all kinds of uh, mainframe data. Once that connection is made, you can define the copybook, and that's what uh, 
can see on the screen right now, it's being done. So that uh, the input component for hydrograph was uh, put into the component palette, uh, into your ETL palette, and uh, the COBOL copybook was assigned to it. And then next, what you do is, uh, you know, you can uh, drag and drop this uh, FCDIC to ASCII conversion component, which is, again, just single component where the data will be pumped from the input component and where the actual conversion will occur. You can give the file paths and all the other, uh, you know, uh, parameters which will define to this component where the data is coming from. But again, do realize that all of this is running on a single installable, which can be installed on a server, on your laptop or your desktop too. Everything has been packaged together. So it will, when you install this, create this whole environment on the laptop or the server where you install this. We'll have this uh, Spark cluster fired up behind the scenes. So you really don't have to worry about setting up a whole Hadoop cluster because Hydrograph works on Hadoop. It takes care of all of that uh, behind the scenes on your own, on its own, when it's being installed. And finally, uh, you'll have to point the output data to an output file uh, where the data will be written and give the uh, metadata for, uh, for that output file which is currently being uh, shown on the screen. And just to be sure that, you know, what we are looking at over here, we're just opening the uh, COBOL copybook to make sure that uh, that redefines and all these other good features and the COM fields are included in this uh, conversion. So all of that is actually there. And um, as we are running execute, the uh, conversion is actually occurring. So it's reading the input file, which is in FCDIC format, read from a mainframe, and it is creating the output file using this uh, component and writing it to the, uh, currently to the disk uh, in this particular scenario, but you are not limited to writing this to a disk. It can be written to any database, and we saw in the previous slide, where it can be written to any of these RDBMS uh, flat files whatever you choose to do. And as you see in, in the uh, uh, palette downstairs, the job is completed execution. And the data, if you look at the data, uh, and all these viewers of data, all these facilities are provided as part of Hydrograph, you can actually view the output data, which is what we did. And that's the end of conversion. So it's as simple as dragging your input file and your output file, and in between uh, assigning the uh, acidic converter and you know run the job reads the input file converts that flatten out flattens out the cobol all you do is copy that whole copy book from the cobol program and give that as the input to the uh, to this and you know it understands the copy uh, the cobol structure and flattens it out and gives you the data in the output files output file structure that you desire so that's how the whole uh, conversion works So again, FCDIC to ASCII conversion, COBOL data types like COM1, COM2, and COM3 are understandable and, uh, you know, uh, decompressed by this con uh, utility. Compl uh, and we just showed you a COBOL copy book for this demo with one single redef redefine. But if, uh, you know, uh, if we are aware of how complex some of these copy books can get in some of the larger enterprise applications, uh, we are able to handle any kind of uh, complex conversion. In fact, uh, we can even handle fixed and variable length files, uh, file formats, which uh, you know became a necessity because of the way COBOL was handling the data uh, in the copybooks. Important point is it's offered as a standalone conversion tool. So you are not required to fire up an entire Hadoop cluster. You are not required to install Hydrograph as a complete tool. It comes in as a single installable utility. It creates its ecosystem in the background and 
you know, it installs on its own all of these associated environments. And you know, you can run it off your laptop, off your desktop, off a server, wherever you choose to run it from. So that in short is, you know, our specific to ASCII conversion utility, which is a subset of Firograph and it is offered as a standalone uh, product. With that, I will hand it back to Nathan to take us to the conclusion and then into the Q&A session. Great, thanks Shahab. And thanks to everyone for joining us today. We've got some good questions coming in, but just a quick reminder, you can contact us at sales at bitwiseglobal.com if we do not get to your questions. And as always, you can stay up to date on the latest information at bitwiseglobal.com.